Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this service of worship. My name is Scott Hoffman, and it's good to gather together to praise God, hear God's holy word, reconnect with one another, and be renewed for our work as disciples of Jesus. Later in our service, we will have time to lift up our joys and concerns in prayer. If you have a joy or concern to be shared, you'll find a prayer request card on the tables in the back of the sanctuary. Please fill one out and place it in the offering plate as the ushers come by, and we'll be sure to share your prayer with uh, everyone during the time of prayers of the people. Also, a warm welcome of those who are worshiping with us virtually on our YouTube channel. You can find a copy of this morning's worship guide on our church website at fpcnewtonnj.org. If you have a joy or concern to share, you can call or email the church office. We'll be sure to include them in our weekly prayer list. As you may notice, uh, Colleen is not here today. <laughs> She's actually stuck down in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, they had some mechanical issues with the plane coming back, so I know the airline industry now is kind of a little bit of a mess, so hopefully the safe travel is getting back to us here today. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Trust in God at all times. For God calls us by name. Love God and love your neighbor. For God asks it of us. Let God show us the way. For we would follow God's Son, Jesus. I invite you to join me in singing verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn number 483, as printed in your worship guide.
seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another, using the unison prayer. It is followed by a time for silent prayer. Let us pray. Mighty and merciful God, you have called us to be your people and claimed us for the service of Jesus Christ. We confess that we have not lived up to our calling. We have been timid and frightened disciples, forgetful of your powerful presence and the strength of your spirit among us. O oh God, forgive us, as you have chosen us and claimed us, strengthen us anew to choose Christ's way in this world. Give us your Holy Spirit, that each of us may be provided with all the gifts needed to fulfill our calling. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy God, these are our prayers of confession. We humbly seek your forgiveness and grace. May we know the peace that is ours through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. As surely as we ask, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God sent Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Forgiven and freed in his name, let us share that peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please share the peace from a distance. Please join me in the unison prayer for illumination, as together we pray, Living God, help us to hear your holy word, that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today our Old Testament lesson, Jonah's story, will be told by all of us. April will give us some instruction. Well, good morning. Good morning. As Scott was saying, this is your big chance. Here we go. We're going to tell the story of Jonah together today. And what this will require is that I divide you into four groups, and I'm going to do it with the three divisions in the sanctuary here. And actually, I could use a little help. Is Macy here? I think she might be. Come on up, Macy. If there are any other children, because this is our time for all God's children. Uh, and uh, come on up. So we're going to divide uh, the congregation. This is, and I'm going to give you an assignment. We're each going to have a different word that we will respond to when you hear the word in the story, all right? So the first word is God. And the choir, which is scattered around in the congregation, will be responsible for when God, when they hear the word God, they are going to re respond with, and give me a note. Hallelujah. Let's try that once. All the, all the choir scattered around, let's try that. Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Okay, good. All right. Now, the next group, we're going to make you this group. You are going to be Jonah. So when you hear the word Jonah, you are going to respond just by raising your hand, right? So whenever you hear the word Jonah in the story, you'll raise your hand. That's easy, right? I gave you an easy part. Okay, now, the middle section, okay, you guys are going to respond to the word Nineveh, which is the name of the city, of course, in the story. So when, and would you like to help with that, Lucy? You could, whenever you hear the word Nineveh, Nineveh you're going to respond with beep, beep, 
like the sound of a taxi horn. That's right. Ready? One, two, three. Beep, beep. Good. Right in the microphone. Come on over here, Macy. You can do it. So you can be our leader for the, the middle section. All right. Then the last group over on the far side, you guys are going to be ship. When you hear the word ship, you're going to rock back and forth and go, and give me another note. Oh, you're not by the organ. <laughs> give me another note. Sailing, sailing. Let's try it. One, two, three. Sailing, sailing. You know, like over the dun da da, whatever the words are to that song, okay? All right, and we got that. Can we try it once? Okay, first we have God. Let me hear. Hallelujah. Okay, next we have Jonah. Hands up, good. Then we have Nineveh. Go ahead, Macy, take it away. Good, okay. And then we have the ship. Sailing, sailing. Good, good rocking. Oh, I like it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the story. And uh, when you hear your appropriate word, you need to respond, all right? It's really nice and loud. All right. One day, long ago, God... Hallelujah. <laughs> spoke to Jonah. Very good. Up on your feet and on your way, Jonah. God said, Hallelujah. I need you to go to the big city of Nineveh. Beep, beep, beep. Preach to the people there. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. Something needs to change. But Jonah was afraid to go to Nineveh. Beep, beep. Jonah got up and decided to go in the opposite direction from Nineveh beep, beep. to the town of Tarshish. He was running away from God. Hallelujah. Jonah went to the port and found a ship scheduled to sail to Tarshish. He paid the fare and boarded the ship, joining the others also going to Tarshish, as far away from God Hallelujah. as Jonah could get. But God Hallelujah. sent a huge storm at sea. The waves towered over the ship <coughs> The ship <laughs> was about to break into pieces. The sailors were terrified. They called out in desperation. They threw everything overboard that wasn't nailed down to lighten the ship. Still, the storm raged and the ship was tossed high on the seas. Meanwhile, Jonah was down below in the hold of the ship, taking a nap. <laughs> he was sleeping through the whole thing. The captain of the ship found Jonah and woke him up. Pray to your God. Hallelujah, the captain said. Maybe your God Hallelujah. We'll see that we're in trouble and rescue us. Then the sailors said to each other, let's get to the bottom of this and find out who on the ship is responsible for this disaster. Well, eventually Jonah fessed up that he was the problem. He had chosen to run away from God. Hallelujah instead of going to Nineveh. The sailors said to Jonah, what are we going to do with you to get rid of this storm? Jonah told them to throw him off of the ship into the sea. The sailors didn't want to do it, but it seemed tossing Jonah overboard was the only choice they had. They said a prayer to God Hallelujah. and tossed Jonah off the ship. And immediately the sea was quiet. The sailors were impressed. 
They were no longer terrified by the sea, but were in awe of God. Hallelujah. They worshiped God Hallelujah. on the spot. But God Hallelujah. wasn't finished convincing Jonah that he needed to go to Nineveh. God Hallelujah. sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah. The fish gulped up Jonah whole. He lived in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Finally, Jonah had had enough. He turned to God Hallelujah. in prayer. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to God. Hallelujah. He prayed a long prayer, thanking the Lord for God's Hallelujah. goodness and constant care. Then at the end of the long prayer, Jonah said, I'll do what I promised I'd do. I'll preach to the people of Nineveh. Beep, beep. Then the fish coughed up Jonah on the seashore. Next, God Hallelujah. spoke to Jonah again. Up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Beep, beep. Preach to them. Tell them to make good choices and change their behavior. They are in a bad way, and I can't ignore it any longer. This time, Jonah made a good choice himself. He went straight to Nineveh. Beep, beep. This time, obeying God's Hallelujah. instructions. When Jonah arrived at Nineveh, beep, beep. He preached God's Hallelujah. message. The people listened and made the good choice to follow God Hallelujah. always. The end. Let's pray, everyone. All loving Creator, help us to make the good choice to be your faithful people. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Great job. So as you might figure, Jonah was probably not the only reluctant follower of God's instructions. So for our sermon time this morning, we're going to be reading some of the instances in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus called people to follow him, or where their encounter with Jesus changed them. After the reading, we'll have a short pause, then hear a response from a disciple, then sing our response. A verse from him 2130 in the Sing the Faith songbooks is called the Summons. And Anne is ready for this. <laughs> so let us listen and respond to what God says to us this day. Our first scripture is Mark 1, verses 16 through 20. It's a story of call. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired man and followed him. Here comes one of those fishermen now. Let go of heavy, wet nets, the tough strain of tarred rope. Our strong hands were empty. We let go of all we knew, we knew how to do. Our livelihood, our identity, to follow a dream, a job description that no one in their senses would take seriously. Follow me, he said, and we did.
verses 13 through 17, a story of how being asked to follow extends beyond the self. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And Levi got up and followed him. As Jesus sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes and the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Follow me, he said to Levi, and we did. Tax collecting never made Levi popular, but it put a roof over our heads and bread on our table, bitter bread, because grabbed and grudged. He invited us to become no longer dogs in the manger, but hosts at the feast. He came right under our roof, sharing our bread and showing us how to share with all the rest. Follow me, he said, and we did. She answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. And here's a mother to tell us what happened. Go, he said. Let the children be first, fed first. Why should the dogs eat their bread? He thinks because I am a Gentile and a Syrophoenician, I am a dog. But I would not be turned away, hoping for healing, hungry for justice. I stood my ground and argued. In God's household, even the dogs are fed. Seeing my faith, he told me to go home and find my daughter healed. Go, he said, and I did.
10, verses 17 through 22. This is a story of someone who can't quite take the last step. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before Jesus and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said back to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. rich young man. Follow me, he said, for I had asked him the next step on a journey of personal salvation. He reminded me of all the good things I already knew and did. So nothing was left to do. I was ready to go. Now sell all you have, he said. Give it away to the poor. How could I let go just like that? Lighten the load, shed my responsibilities, become someone I did not know? What would be left? Follow me, he said. But with heavy heart, I shook my head. <laughs> Come, he said, and I did, following his voice through the crowd on the edge of town. I needed wait no longer. My voice had been heard, calling for change, crying out for a fresh start. Even though I meant casting off my old ways, no longer the needy person everyone, everybody knew. Come, he said, I saw what God could do. Your faith has healed you, he told me. Now go. He never said, follow me. But as I could see, there was no other way.
What is the thread that holds them together in a way that we can hear them and perhaps act on them? We repeated the story of Jesus calling the fishermen to link last week to this week. It is a way to say that both weeks, and probably every week if you think about it, we are talking about how we respond, not only when Jesus calls us directly to do something, but also when the encounter is not what we expect. Might we need to make a change? As you heard, it is common people who are called, women and men, children and adults, both the Brendas from last week and the Levi's from this week. Some drop everything and go, like the fishermen. Some are changed, like Levi and his wife, who move from being takers to ones who share. One had to push Jesus a little. She came back at him when at first Jesus would push, push her and her child away. The rich young man, a good man, a keeper of the law, found he could not go that one last step. So when Jesus said, follow me, he couldn't go there. Maybe not right then, but there is room for God's forgiveness for him later. I'm sure we could all say that. Even Bartimaeus, a blind man, looking for a fresh start, saw what God could do. Jesus never asked him to follow, but he knew he had to. The thread then becomes not only who is called, everyone, regardless of status, but also the task for each, going with Jesus or changing one's life. What of us today? You may identify with one or more of the people, willing, reluctant, changed, needing to push back. The footprints in your worship guide are there for you to think and pray about what you might be called to do during this interim time in front of us. Pastor Heather will get us into the details of what the interim process is charged with doing. As I am sure you could figure out, and as I said, it is a process. There are certain steps that need to be taken in a particular order to get us into position to call our next installed pastor. A process, though, requires inputs. If you think of it as baking a cake, we input butter, sugar, flour, leavener, milk, we apply heat. So each of us can bring an ingredient to the baker. Maybe even say, come and do it in my oven. But guess what? We're all gonna be happy with the result. We've got delicious cake. So what might our inputs be to the interim process, this transition time? Because be sure, we will be asked to participate in it. And when we are asked, how will we respond? Do we participate in a vision and mission statement process? A statement of who we, are, who we want to be as a church in the future? Will we give input to any suggestion that we change our committee structure? Can we stay open to change? Will we say yes if asked to be part of the group that does the actual search for another pastor when the time comes? These are the big things we as a congregation will need to be doing with Pastor Heather's guidance. But there are some small things we might be asked to do as well. Make a snack or soup for a group that is meeting. Say yes when the call goes out for help in setting up tables or taking them down or washing dishes. Say yes if asked to be part of the lawn mowing team. Say yes when the time comes to clean out both our actual attics and basements and storage closets which we are planning to do for the church here this year, and our metaphorical attics and basements, those long-held ideas, attitudes, expectations. Say yes when asked to be part of a discussion or study group. Come out to the potluck, picnic, punch on the patio, coffee hour. Say yes I can, as often as you can, in as many ways as you can. This list is not exhausted by any means. Use your footprint to think of others and ways to act on them. The one thing that each and every one of us can do is pray for Pastor Heather, for each other, for the interim process. Prayer is the foundation of all that we are. It is the number one input. Let us pray. Gracious God, 
In Jesus Christ, you called disciples, and by the Holy Spirit, made them into the church. Help us to welcome Pastor Heather and the changes that are to come during this interim time. Let your spirit be with us as we answer the call. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit and join in the affirmation of faith in the worship of God. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ and empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God forever at work in our lives, and calling us to be Christ's disciples. You may be seated. The announcements for the coming week are in our yellow insert in the worship guide. Um, I just want to draw your attention to next Sunday, the potluck. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out in the parlor that asks, asks us, you know, are we going to, what are, what are we going to bring? Not if we're going to bring, what are we going to bring? Because we know we're going to be here. Um, and, you know, as we say, we don't want only desserts. So, we got to work on that. <laughs> Um, does anybody know of anything that's not in here that we need to be aware of? Jay. Yes. I wonder whether we'll need some help setting up for the potluck. We, we probably could do some help next Sunday. If, if you come to worship early, like 10 o'clock or so, maybe just set up some tables or something. Um, the call may go out during the week, but just be aware that the call may be coming. Part of our discipleship is giving thanks for all of our gifts, those of the earth and sky and church and community. Through our monetary gifts, we seek to bring the work of God to fruition here in this place. Let us present our gifts and offerings. Of the interim time, we also give thanks. 
Receive our gratitude through these offerings and hear our petition that as you challenge us with inevitable change, we remain steadfast in support of your church in this place. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to our time to share our joys and concerns. The prayer list is on the gray sheet in your bulletin. I have, I have one appeal that we received, and this is from a uh, family promise that is in desperate need of toiletries. So if you can help in any way, please drop them at their door. Okay? Thank you. Yes, Family Promise is in desperate need of toiletries. So as soon as we can, if we could drop them off at their front door, they would be very grateful. Thank you. Are there any other additions to our prayer list? And let us pray. We lift our voices in prayer and praise, Holy God. For you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We are truly blessed for that good news for all people. We thank you this day for the wonder and beauty of creation. We thank you for the love of family and friends. We thank you for the opportunities before us for faithful witness and service, and a chance to be a part of a new chapter of this church. We thank you for the blessings of this day, for the creative retelling of the story of Jonah, and for all those who said yes to taking the call. You came to us in Jesus to show us the way, to let us know that we are your beloved children, that each and every one of us, young and old, willing like a fisherman or reluctant like Jonah or the rich man have a part to play and can be a light to the world. We hold before you, O God of compassion, our human needs, and so we pray for justice for all those in this world who live under oppression. We pray for peace where there is conflict, especially this day in Ukraine, but also in our neighborhood. We pray for those who are suffering this day in body or mind, and especially pray for Sophia and G and Sally and John. Be with them, hold them close, and let them know that they are near to your heart. Help us to listen to the leading of your spirit, to be attentive to your voice. We proclaim your praise and show Christ to the world, for he is our strength Redeemer and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please stand in body and spirit as we sing hymn number 2172. We are called.
into the world, listening for God's call to you. Listen with your heart, your mind, and your soul. Be open to possibilities and to the spirit moving within you. May the blessings of God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit the Sustainer be with you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.